Um, so let's see. America's favorite, red, white, and blue, and gold. I guess a lot of times I do use like the notions of cooking and recipes in the way I describe making my work, but mainly that I, I do think that cooking as an act of making something is sort of metaphor for many aspects of life. I came to making the skillets as I was taking an iron pouring class and I didn't know what I wanted to make um, and then I, it was just and it was a it was a casting iron workshop and I was like and I'm really in the food and blah 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 and I was like well, why don't I make my own cast iron skillet and so then I started thinking about well what could it be and what was the possibility and so I started thinking about cast iron cookware, my own personal history and relationship to it as this more old fashioned sort of thing that I personally didn't use that much up until then, unless it was for nostalgic reasons occasionally, because it was much more to me healthy and uh, easy, more maintenance friendly to use stainless steel pots and pans. Um, but I started, I started thinking about, well, my grandmother and sort of, you know, this sort of family like heir, heirlooms and legacies and this sort of also that the cast irons are sort of like a living metal that, you know, you can't use soap on it. You have, it has special care needs so it doesn't rust, but also keep it seasoned. And so th as this sort of almost this organism with all these different cultural history. And then, you know, I started thinking about if there was a way I can embody sort of who was using them, who's cooking in them and sort of thinking about the, from a just initially culinary perspective, the sort of African origins of American cuisine of folks using these Skillets that are almost contemporary, that are contemporary with sort of the formation of America. But I would say then the bigger picture of the skillets conceptually is looking at the African origins of America, but not just through culinary traditions, but using cooking as this metaphor for creation. You know, if you think of America as a melting pot, as this sort of stew of different cultures and each like the potato and the carrot and this beef and the celery, you know, and onions are all different cultures that sort of, in a way, uh, Tony Morrison says, says it great that sort of black people are that pot and sort of like in casting like these wooden masks that sort of, to me is this, the wooden mask is a ready-made, even if it isn't like an authentic mask, they take on this sort of cultural history so that wooden form is sort of is layered with these different histories that I'm then recasting into the body of these skillets. And at first I was like, oh, well, I can't like afford like these really authentic ones. Or I got, then I started getting some that were more authentic of the mask. But I started actually liking the idea that the notions of how African and how real they were because myself as a black person in America, who I'm, you know, I'm removed very removed from Africa, like I'm sort of most most people in America, regardless of their ethnicity, are who are who, people who aren't first generation, whatever. They're very they're copies of a copy of something that came from somewhere else mixed with something else. And so I like this idea of making copies of these masks that had questionable levels of authenticity, and then that and duplicating them, and that there's lost information also in sand casting, which is this traditional technique for making a cast iron. Actually, that process for me it was somewhat analogous to most Americans that they are these like loss, there are these copies that are loss of, loss of information of the original. But also to mix it up, I started, every time I recast one, I add a new body part of my own, whether it's a nose, an ear, my lips, penis, or even butthole. Over like 
my dermatologist said I wash my hands too much. <laughs> this is just, you could make this from scratch, but I just use this canned cream corn. Um, and now I will add the cornbread. Most cornbread makes you cough. You know, you could choke on it so dry. But I'm, I'm like going above and beyond what they, or the recommended uh, instructions for it. So this, this, piece, this is a little bit like my work. There is a, per se, an, a ready-made element to it and the pre-made mix, but I'm like taking it further. Like I'm starting on the history of, of like this existing thing and adding more to it. So now I'm adding cor whole corn, which you could use fresh corn, but as it's corn is like ideally seasonal, I'm actually using just a can of corn. So I'm adding like two cups of, of corn to it. And in terms of the finishing of the skillets, if the first gr grouping of them, I would season in the oven with grapeseed oil, uh, which is just a technique for using a, seasoning a skillet that you could eat out of. And then I later uh, moved on to like copper plating them. And for me, that brought on some notions of like French culinary traditions that depending on the mask that is represented in the skillet and the culture that it is maybe derived or influenced from, coupled with the copper plating or the enameling, could have even a greater you know, conceptual significance, thinking about colonialism and mixed with the culinary traditions of these different places. And then recently I've gotten into gold plating them and sort of bringing on a whole new meaning of, of, of sort of what does it mean to have this gold-plated object. I would say in general, the, as I'm like maturing as an artist, um, I've becoming less and less having the need to say exactly what my instincts are or what my intent is. Rather, I've had my instincts, but uh, like there is this loose framework that has like was the catalyst of my work, but I feel as if I'm expanding on it. There's not always like a an exact answer or of like why I did this or that. It just made sense, and that I don't I don't think it always needs to have this sort of footnotes of why. Because also, I want the viewer to be able to place themselves within this artwork and their lived experience. I'm not like a illustrator. <laughs> it's a double H. For Hugh Hayden. And we're just gonna do it on the bottom rack for about 50 minutes to an hour. Voila. Now the worst part, the dishes. <laughs> but I'm not gonna do that all right now. And that's cooking with you.